This is problem 1 in IMO 2017. For each integer a0 that is greater than 1, we define the sequence a n by a n plus 1 is equal to either square root of a n if it's an integer or is a n added by 3. Find all a0 such that there exists an integer a such that a n equals to a for infinitely many n. Before we move on, don't forget to give a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on post notifications. The statement of this problem might be quite long, but it's actually very easy to understand if you try to list out the terms inside the sequence by starting with four different values. So let's try what would happen if I start with two. I actually want to choose one, but I was told that the first term must be larger than 1, so I can only start with 2. Now, the first term is 2, then because it's not a perfect squared, so square root will not be an integer, so I can only add it by 5. Again, it's not perfect squared, so I'll just keep adding. And in fact, this sequence will just go on forever, keep adding the last term by 3, because all these terms, they follow one sim simple pattern, which is that they are congruent to mod 3, which means when it's divided by 3, it has remainder equal to 2. Now, that's the problem because all perfect squares must be either 0 or 1, must have remainder either 0 or 1 when it's divided by 3. For example, if it's a multiple of 3, then I can set it as 3k whole squared. Then it's equal to 9k squared, clearly a multiple of 3. Now otherwise, it's either of the form 3k minus 1 or 3k plus 1 whole squared. And when they are expanded, These parts are multiples of 3, and the rest is just plus 1, so they both have remainder 1 when they are divided by 3. So that means numbers of the form 2 mod 3, they are, which are congruent to 2 mod 3, will never be perfect squares. So this sequence shows that. Whenever I start a sequence with a number that is um, congruent to 2 mod 3, then I will surely will never get the property I want, which is that there exists some number that appears infinitely many times inside the sequence. Because each term, each number only appears once in these, in these kind of sequences. Because it just goes on forever. Now what about if I start the sequence by 3? So it's not perfect squared, so I just keep adding until I reach 9, which is 3 squared. So when I take square root, it becomes 3, so the next sequence is go goes back to 3. Next term of the sequence goes back to 3, and we realize that it's actually a loop. Now, these kind of sequences will satisfy the requirement because it's a loop, so the numbers 3, 6, and 9 appears infinitely many times. So 3 is one of the answers, or in fact, 3, 6, 9 is are uh, some of the answers. There may be more, but it's yet to investigate. Our next example is that if I start the sequence with 4, and now immediately goes to 2, and then we'll return to our first case. Notice that this time I'm not starting a sequence with a number that is congruent to 2 mod 3, but it's actually congruent to 1 mod 3 instead. But when I take the square root of this number, it goes back to a number that is of congruent to 2 mod 3. So we have to be careful that it's actually kind of like a black hole. Whenever I enter some number that is congruent to 2 mod 3, then I will never get out of this 
So and the sequence will just go on forever by um, adding three, adding three, and so on. So it's, it's possible that there are some numbers which are congruent one more four will lead to, again, not having any number that appears infinitely many times in the sequence. From these three examples, we've already known what will happen if I start the sequence by 5, which is here, or 6, which is here. So let's try one more, which is 7. Again, 7 is a number that is congruent to 1 mod 3. So at first we keep adding. Then we reach a perfect square, which is 16. My take square root is 4. And it's a perfect square again. So I take square root again. Now I go back again, I've returned um, to a number that is congruent to 2 mod 3. So again, I will not get any number that would appear infinitely many times inside the sequence. So after demonstrating this, um, this sequence, starting with four different values, I think you should already know the pattern of the numbers that would actually give us some numbers that would appear infinitely many times. And yes, those numbers will be the multiples of three, because only these numbers that is possible for us to create a loop. So now what remains is to write out the proof vigorously. So from our demonstration just now, it's quite clear that we should divide into three cases when we write out the complete proof. The first case is the simplest one, which is if a naught is congruent to 2 mod 3, then for all n, a n would be congruent to 2 mod 3 as well. And that tells us that a n is not a perfect square these terms will never be a perfect square. And so I can say that it's just a repeated addition of three. And therefore, there will not exist any value a such that a n equals a for infinitely many n because it's just an arithmetic progression so no term repeat at all now that's the first case so for the second case I'm going for the case when a not is congruent to 1 mod 3 I'm going to use a trick, which is to consider AM, the smallest term in the sequence. I consider this term because I was inspired by two of the demonstrations just now. If I start the sequence by 4 or 7, these two numbers are both congruent to 1 mod 3, and I'm going to eventually reach some number that is congruent to 2 mod 3, and in both cases, there are 2. And as I said just now, it's just like a black hole. Once I enter this region, which is that a number that is congruent to 2 mod 3, I will never get out of it, because all the, num all the terms after that would also be congruent to 2 mod 3. So for this smallest term, if this AM is congruent to 2 mod 3, then we can go back to our first case and say that there is no solution. Otherwise, that means we have now assumed that the smallest term is also congruent to 1 mod 3. So in that case, then 
I'm going to have this smallest number to be added by 3 repeatedly. It's definitely not a perfect square because otherwise the next term will be even smaller. So I can keep adding by 3 and then I'll take square root. I will return to some number that is congruent to 113 again and then I'll keep adding. So there is kind of a very small possibility for, for there to be a loop. Now, if the smallest term is congruent to 1 mod 3, then I'm going to divide it into two subcases. Is that let natural number k such that this am is between 3k plus 1 whole squared and 3k plus 2 whole squared. So that means it's bounded by some perfect squares and we know that it's not perfect squared so I'm taking straight inequalities and after that I know that AM is definitely going to reach 3k plus 2 whole squared. So by repeated addition then the sequence eventually reaches 3k plus 2 whole squared and then the next term will be 3k plus 2 because I have to take square root. Now by the minimality of am, I know that this am must be at most 3k plus 2 and again am is larger than 3k plus 1 whole squared so that means I've established an inequality about k so I solve it so it's 9k squared plus 3k minus 1 and that's less than 0 so by computing squares and solving it, I have k to be less than root 5 minus 1 over 6. I should actually not let k to be a natural number, but in this case, as I say, it's a, just a non-negative integer. So then I know that, therefore, k equals 0, and so am is between 1 and 4. But that would not work because we know that AM is now congruent to 1 mod 3, but it's between two numbers that are congruent to um, 1 mod 3. So there's no solution. That's the first subcase. So for the second subcase, it's actually a very similar setting, but I'm going to say that it's between. Three k plus two whole squared, and three k plus four whole squared. The reason that this is a different case is because I've swapped the remainder between the lower and upper bounds when it's divided by three. I mean the basis of the lower and upper bounds. So for these terms, three k plus one or three k plus four, we have one more three. While for three k plus two, we have two more three. So I've swapped the order. Now I can use a similar argument I can say that 3k plus 2 whole squared is less than again less than am less than or equal to 3k plus 4 so again we can solve with establishing quadratic inequality that we have 9k squared added by 9k which is less than 0 so that means we have k to be between minus 1 and 0 again we cannot have an integer that is between minus 1 and 0 so we have no solution now from from the from these results we know that we can never have the smallest term in these kind of sequences to be congruent to 1 mod 3. 
So it must be congruent to mod 3. And so we will always return to the first case. And so we have no solution, even when this first term is congruent to 1 mod 3. So now what remains is just what will happen when a naught is divisible by 3. The third case. We can actually use a very similar argument, just like what I've done just now, to show that we will always eventually go back to the loop 369. 369. So I can say that again, let AM be the smallest term in the sequence. So again, I'm going to let k to be a non-negative integer such that am is between some perfect squares with the base is a multiple of 3. So that means it's between two multiples of 9. Now for this, we can see that, again, I'm going to keep adding 3 into AM until it reaches the perfect square, which is 3k plus 3, and then I'm going to take square root. So using a similar argument, and by minimality of AM, I can say that 3k whole squared is less than am and is at most 3k plus 3. So that means we have this to be less than 0. And that's 13 over 4. So solving, I have k to be root 13 and by 1 and the whole thing divided by 6. So that's approximately um, 0 0.76, I guess. And we know that k is a non-negative integer, so that means, therefore, k is equal to 0. And so we have 0 to between, no, a and to between 0 and 9. So it's, that means a m is either Three or six. Of course, it won't be six because whenever it's six, the next term is nine, and then we go go back to three again. So the only possibility for the smallest term is then three. So that means we will always have to loop repeatedly in the sequence. So that means this will happen whenever the first term is a multiple of 3. So therefore, any multiple, any multiple of 3 will be part of an answer, follow our answer. So this is the complete solution.